morning. I know so nice to see your your face in person and not just through a uh, you know on the computer on paper or through LinkedIn. Thank you. Likewise, so lovely to put a face to the name, and and I'm of course very familiar what you are doing, but just in social media. So lovely to catch up, not face to face, but at least on on screen. How are you today? I'm doing wonderful. So I'm actually in Canada. I know we have quite a time difference between us. I am in the mountain zone time zone. So here in Edmonton, it is 7:21 this morning. But like you, it's a beautiful summer day, so I am happy. And here in where I am, we are very cognizant of our Indigenous people across Canada, and we say that I am today um, sitting on Territory Six Treaty land. So that's a common way how we will address ourselves when we are on virtual calls to say, you know, my name is Cecilia La Torre, my pronouns are she/her, and today I'm happy to be here on Territory Six Treaty land. And we learn from each other of the different parts of the country that we're in. How beautiful. I I really appreciate that. You know, it kind of leaves me with sort of a warmth and and what a lovely introduction to the call. So yeah, I'm I'm based in Finland, uh, very close to the capital Helsinki, and I can tell you, yes, it's a beautiful sunny day. It's the best time of the year in Finland, and I think we are all not sleeping very much. We are enjoying the summer and the midnight sun, the light uh evenings for the fall. So I was very excited when we had this invitation first to participate, but then it was this what we said like this, you know, speed dating and to see your name come up because I I very much admire the what you what I've seen that you've done with Bayer in terms of sustainability in terms of you know advocating for for people for women for taking into context all of the things that we aspire for you know health for all hunger for none and i see that your passion in that so i'm so curious to learn about your journey I know that you've been in different parts of the world with short-term assignments, so I'm very curious and full of wonder to hear about that and to learn about that and to see how you bring everything together now that you're back in Europe, back in Finland. Thanks so much for your kind words. You know, it's it's lovely to hear that I've been able to inspire you. And, and you know, I've got strong role models myself and you are you are certainly one of them. And, and, you know, really, really happy to exchange. So if I just tell a little bit about myself. So my day job is being the head of communications uh, in Finland. But then I feel that I'm lucky enough to somehow combine the things that I feel very passionate about also at my work. So I have to say that the fact that actually Finland has got a very pivotal role when it comes to Bayer's global sustainability strategy and reaching 100 million women in in low and middle income countries with access to contraception. So we play a massive role in that. So it has enabled me to, to really work on the topics that I hold dear, like women's health and gender equality also as part of my my work so that has really carried me and motivated and kept me inspired for many many years and in a way I suppose you know I have uh, strengthened my hobbies or voluntary projects through my work you know so it's it's kind of like all over the all over my life this this passion for 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 these topics yeah so what what about you what do you do for work and how is that connected with your personal passion yeah it's it's interesting because isn't that the beautiful thing when what we do for work overlies with what we do in our personal life and vice versa and we can take those learnings so i work in the women's health division at Bayer. I am a women's health account specialist, so I am a field employee and I have the opportunity to visit healthcare professionals and speak to them about topics that, as yourself, I am so passionate about. So 
things like equality for women, things like giving people a choice on their contraception. So we have a direct lineage because I always say, you know, the contraception that you're using is actually made in a factory in Finland. And now we're so excited to be able to offer more because there's a beautiful new factory that will be um, started in Costa Rica. And so with that, always bringing that to the forefront when speaking to people and saying, these are United Nations sustainability goals, you know, and the developmental goals. And we really hit on so many of these, no poverty, no hunger, good health, education, because we're teaching and telling people about opportunities and choices and giving them agency in their life. And that all leads to gender equality. One thing that I've learned through my journey and Bear has been so pivotal in in this is giving me language to speak to things I didn't understand, not that I didn't understand, but that I'm learning about. So speaking to contraception is for anybody who needs contraception. It's not necessarily a man or a woman. So understanding that there is a diverse population in the world and bringing it back to my personal life, I have two uh, young adult children. They're in their 20s. So they're teaching me constantly And my volunteer endeavors often lie as well with empowering women or empowering people who identify as women because a very strong hold in the LGBTQ communities and my volunteer experience as well, or more experience that the things that I do within Bayer are leaked to that because I'm so closely connected with the BRGs that we have at Bayer that are just remarkable opportunities for learning and connecting and then bringing that passion back to the business, to what we do every day to you know health for all hunger for none that's so true and i i feel similarly really empowered that what i think i've realized during the years with bayer is that we all have a massive power to influence it doesn't matter like where you are actually in the organization or high ranking you are but we all can actually live our values As long as we understand our power and use that power to make the world a better place. I mean, it sounds a little bit like a cliche, but I think it all starts with very small steps. The change is about taking the first step. It's about taking action. And, you know, of course you need the goals, but goals without action don't actually lead anywhere. So this is actually something that I talk to many young colleagues about as as well. You know, I do, I'm involved in many mentoring programs and I always highlight that, you know, yes, this is your job, but think beyond that and think about what you want to achieve in the world and think how you can use that power that you have been given to drive the matters that you actually really believe in. So yes, that's kind of like what I think. It's interesting when you say mentoring and coaching, I've also had that amazing opportunity through Bear to participate in several global mentoring experiences. And I learn as much from the people that I'm that I'm mentoring as, as they learn from me. It becomes a really like a nice synergy where we're both learning and teaching each other things and giving each other insight to things that we wouldn't otherwise realize. And, you know, when speaking, I also mentor people within, you know, voluntarily, I do that myself and other organizations in the city with youth. But speaking to people, I often tell them exactly what you said, that the idea is, you know, this is what you do for your day job, but what the passion that you bring outside of that and and then it comes back, it all it all flows. And that's the beauty of being able to be passionate about what you do. And we've talked about sustainability. For me, sustainability comes so intertwined with everything that is diversion, equity, inclusion, and accessibility. And I feel very, very pri- privileged in my position, you know, as a cis woman living today in the world where we do have opportunity and agency in the part of the world that I am in, in Canada, but understand that in other parts of the world and oftentimes very close by to where we are, things aren't as simple for people. And understanding as well our position, like you said, of influence. If we can have a conversation with one person to spark 
to ignite that passion to want to help and like you said change the world it it does sound cliche but it's the most powerful <laughs> statement because that's you know you influence your world and your family's world and those around you and the people you work with and that's the groundswell and the impetus for actual change absolutely and and you know that's i i feel exactly the same as as you in that sense also that you know i understand that you know i'm in a very sort of privileged situation and I feel that you know I've had the opportunities to to learn and to educate myself and gain a living and in a way it's it's my turn to return back to the the world you know what whatever way I can and when it comes to actually equal opportunities or gender equality I really feel that unless you know if you think about the sustainable development goals if we don't hit the SDG 5 and we actually don't have the power or the efforts of half of the population, we will not actually achieve the rest of the goals. So that's really, really uh, important that everybody's efforts, everybody's strengths are you to used now to tackle the issues we we have and and you know that's uh, one of the reasons why I'm active I'm uh, the member of board of UN women in Finland so they are basically the United Nations organization for gender equality so that that gives me like the different perspectives you know it gives me an opportunity to to think about the matter globally and it is a learning opportunity but it's also an opportunity to give back and really think about either you know through knowledge sharing or raising funds to try to it's it's about you know it's about solidarity it's about sisterhood it's about making sure that nobody is left behind in this this matter so when it comes to for example contraception what i also think is that we as women you know we have the same rights but you know the challenges are different and and you know our situations are different but it doesn't take away the fact that we all should have the same rights and with women it starts with the right to make decisions about your own body and that's where i stand like with my with my sisters <laughs> across the world absolutely you know we talk about um, sustainability development goal number five gender equality and that's something that is so relevant you know we often people perhaps think oh you know we've, we've gone past that like let's move on to the new thing women you know women can vote women can, can earn the workplace you know it's not your grandmother's uh, society anymore but as you know and I see as well we're in fully developed countries where we are right now and there's still struggles. So I, when you say to that vision of empathy and solidarity, people around the world do need our help. And that's where we can use our privilege to come together and to build awareness and to help in our philanthropic endeavors, in our work, because it's people, profit and also planet. How do we make those three mesh together we're all on the same planet we're all people and of course we work for a company that has the ability to make an impact and help people in different parts of the world so i fully agree with you that position that we're in of, of influence can really make a difference uh, one thing that i've been so fortunate in my journey through Bayer, like i said has been all of the learning but part of sustainability is so intertwined with you know, the business resource groups that we have at Bayer that we're so fortunate to have because I speak to friends and other companies and they don't have that ability of like-minded people in a corporation from around the world with a global perspective and support from our leadership to say, yes, this is something that's relevant to you. So we have business resource groups across the world and, and Canada, so, you know, grow, so women in leadership. Uh, we also have the LGBTQ one blend and enable for people who 
may have neurodiversities. Here in Canada, we are also very privileged to have other ones that are very relevant to us. Personally, we have a BRG called River, which is for the Indigenous people. So even if you don't yourself identify in any of these, we still have allyship. So we have in, in within the GROW membership, several people who identify as a man because they want to support women in this getting a seat at the table and elevating their voices for this sisterhood that we talk about and that we're so passionate about. Uh, for people who are don't identify as LGBTQ to have the ability to be an ally and give their voice as well and share and learn along the way. So Bear's been so fundamental and I want to say very progressive in having those business resource groups because they're not just employee resource groups, they're business resource groups because it all does come full circle and what we do every day in our work is influencing these different you know, groups and this diversity of people that may not have the share of voice that, you know, a straight white man may perhaps may have in a, in a country, a first world country. So I do feel very just grateful to have that opportunity and to be part of that, that energy that's changing the world. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's two ways, you know, it's also uh, understanding our own privileges in, in, in that sense. And and kind of like I suppose the the other side is is having empathy and having understanding time for diversity and people who are different from us because in a way if you think about it in our everyday life it doesn't take much to create a safe psychologically safe environment and enable like we say in fin- Finnish you know let all flowers flourish or something like that so you know it doesn't take much to enable that diversity and to to create the feeling of uh, belonging for everybody but you know I agree with you that it's important that all of this can be spoken about uh, openly and you know for us all to understand that we have so much to learn from each other I think that's where way also starts and and that keeps fascinating me every day to understand that yeah sure in certain aspects of diversity and inclusion I'm an expert you know I have studied gender equality a lot but then I can so clearly see areas where I'm really like a beginner and it kind of it fascinates me and it inspires me it gives me new opportunities to engage with people that I wouldn't normally come across but these business resource groups are great also from that perspective you know it it's a uh, another way of learning and interesting you know we're right now where you're in a different time zone, you're in a different country, you're in a different continent than I am. However, we are connecting and we're finding things that unite us and that are common ground, besides working for the same company, besides having similar interests, but overall, and that's something that I've learned now with with COVID, you know, we're in this post-pandemic recovery situation now. The world all lived something similar, you know, in different capacities. Some places were affected more than others, but this new way of taking on relationships and and business virtually yes has its limitations we're not making face to face but has opened so many doors you know doors to connect with with yourself right now in, in a totally different place of the world and it's like we're sitting in a room together to connect with colleagues when i was mentoring you know a person who was in south africa or when i'm connected to a global brg meeting and there's people representing from everywhere that bayer is around the world and as we know it's global it's it's everywhere and like you said to be able to learn with that sense of curiosity and if i think i've learned about this i know so much about this but there's always so much more to learn and if you approach it from a space of this makes me better as a person and I'm this in turn makes me better what I do in my job and my business and that's why and I think that that's the crux of of inclusion diversity and sustainability how they all come together when we actually embody what we're saying we don't just say it we're actually doing it with our actions and we're taking action and we're being involved and we're connecting people to come together perhaps you had never heard of an idea that I'm telling you about and you're oh my goodness I'm curious and you'll tell your family and then you'll have a conversation with a colleague and that's how we grow 
grow, right? That's how we become better humans and more empathetic, as you said, to to what's going on around us. Absolutely. I fully agree. That's interesting. I wanted to ask you, in your different positions that you've been in around the world, I know that you have had an opportunity to to travel. What has that experience been like when you look at it from that lens of, you know, sustainability and gender equality and the SDG goals and bringing it all together? How has that enlightened you in your in your career path? I, I suppose, yeah, yeah. Like you say, I've um, I've been lucky enough to live in different countries, and and also I had a short term assignment with the Southeast Africa. So I I collaborated with lovely colleagues from Kenya and uh, South Africa. So. I think, you know, one of the key elements is that you learn quite a lot about yourself. And I think that's in a way a cornerstone, to me at least, of understanding other cultures is to understand, you know, when where you are coming from, you know, uh, what, what's your background and, and uh, who you are as a person. So that's been a lovely experience to have. And then, of course, having a strong local perspective, you know, I I do a lot of work like from the Nordics trying to combine the Nordic innovation ecosystem with, you know, for example, the unmet need in contraception in low and middle income countries, but then actually connecting with real people and gaining insights what the actual problems are both like at individual level, but also from the society perspective, and then trying to understand that how I can bring value to the ecosystem there. And and also like, what can I learn from my colleagues or from people that I meet and what I can then take away home, you know, how we can learn. And I have to say that the experience in, although it was a virtual experience, this South short term assignment, it was really eye opening and inspiring to see how, you know, what what the similarities are and what the differences are and, and kind of like the joy of life and how much people kind of embraced the kind of like joy in life that was something that that's why I still keep in touch with with my African colleagues which is quite interesting that I actually watch their town halls and I I still follow all internal events because I just want to keep that little spark and that kind of like passion drive as part of my life in the Nordics. So I, I find it quite amusing sometimes that I'm actually, I'm still listening to their uh, town halls just to get a glimpse of that. You know, obviously it's it's useful from information perspective, but also just, you know, keeps my spirits high. So what about you then? What what are kind of like, if you think about your life, whether that's, uh, you know, from professional perspective or voluntary work, that what are the biggest learnings and what, what has inspired you most? Well, similar to you, you know, we talk about that, looking at things from a different way. So we all come from different backgrounds, even if we're people in, in the same city or in the same school or business, we all come from different perspectives. So really challenging my own biases has been something that I've been working on actively and talking about it. So I talk about it, like I said, I have two adult children who are, you know, inspirational in just how they approach life with, it, like you said, that joy of life and that new eyes and to continually have conversations conversations that spark interest or that spark challenging myself and how I approach things. You know, when it comes to talking to people every day around contraception, when I'm speaking to healthcare professionals and educating them, I often come into it with this assumption, again, in, as my position in the world of privilege, and they will very kindly, I will feel humbled in their presence because they'll say, that is wonderful. Thank you for this. But you have to understand that who the person I'm talking to this isn't even, they're not even there yet. So how do we start educating? How do we start even opening the conversation about when you give 
you know, people a choice to decide the contraception that works for them or when they decide to have children or not, they then have the opportunity to study, to go into the workforce, to change the world. And I oftentimes, I'm, you know, I'm, a, I'm an avid reader, and I remember reading the book by Melinda Gates. And she had said, given a similar, you know, she went into with the best philanthropic intentions with the, you know, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to go into Africa, into certain parts and tell women, you know, come and contraception, and we're giving it to you. And people were saying, that's great, but I don't even have the ability to arrive to where you are. So if there's no access to get there, or it takes me, you know, I have to get childcare, I have to take time off work, I, it takes me however long to take a bus there, to drive there. So even understanding things from that micro level to then take it to the macro and say, right, not everything we do, we can't just put our own tone on it. We have to sit back and learn. And and like you said, I love when you that you're still going to these town halls. That's, that's awesome. I love that to say, you know, you that's how much they've inspired you. And that's what I aim to do often in, in my personal life and in work is to connect with things that I would never have thought I would connect with or that I just didn't have the ability to see beyond what I can see. And it fuels me and it gives me inspiration to keep going. And I, you know, I look at it now, how it comes full circle. My daughter is going off. She has her first degree. She's graduated. And she's been very inspired by what she's seen that that I have done and the activities that I've done. And now she's going off, you know, with a scholarship to another part of the world to learn about international relations, how she can help women and people who don't have opportunities through education and get into an international community speaking about that. So I'm so proud of her that it's actually been, you know, impregnated in every point of our lives that we're passionate about bringing people together and learning of different perspectives and then finding a way as a planet to go together and and grow. It's, yeah, it comes full circle, I think, at the end of the day. Absolutely. I I agree. And uh, I love the way, you know, the different generations, we can drive the same mission. You know, we are all in this together and we are all needed, you know, especially when you think about the sustainability goals. We, We all have the responsibility and also our own strengths, the way we can contribute to solving the, the issues that we are we are facing. But I love when you when you talk about your children and I've got two two sons my myself and in a way I also expose <laughs> them uh, to my my passion and and what I have understood you know like I've traveled in in Africa uh, a little bit and have I have done some uh, voluntary work and what I have understood as well that you know one single girl in an African village can't just magically empower herself alone to make decisions about her own life. What we need there, it's like you say, education. We need to educate the parents. We we need to educate the teachers, the communities, societies. So everybody, and as a kind of like coming from a Nordic uh, country where, you know, when it comes to gender equality, quite advanced, it was a learning to me how in certain contexts, actually having, you know, the boys, the men, educating them as well. And and I think, you know, to be honest, I think we can do a better job in that also in, in more the sort of Western thinking that you know gender equality or contraception it's no not only you know women's issue it's a societal issue and empowering everybody benefits everybody at the individual level but also at at the societal level and that's kind of like what I keep explaining to to my own children that you know this is the way I see it and having two sons have given me also, the, I suppose, you know, the male perspective in into things. And I love the conversations with young people because they, they certainly have the energy and the, I don't know, the, the sort of uh, the hope 
and the kind of, yeah, the positivity about the change as well. And I think if we can have uh, even a little spark of that and, and, and keep that flame alive, you know, we'll certainly have better chances of succeeding. Yes, I have a son as well. And those conversations are often in our house, you know, if I'm teaching them or conversing to them or sharing with them about, you know, women getting a seat at the table and the sisterhood, that is equally important for, for men to contribute to that. And to so it's, it's not one or the other, it's all of us. And when we think about, you know, the diversity that we have in our world, one isn't more important than the other. They all intersect. They have different values that they come together and we can all be at a seat at the table understanding those different you know, attributes that everybody brings because everybody brings so much. So that male lens or that female lens or the lens from somebody who may have, you know, a neurodiversity or from the lens of somebody who may, you know, identify with a different pronoun than what I have. All of those things bring space to the table and it really enriches not only conversations, but the way that you move forward in life. And to just that, like you said, that spark of of youth, of hope. And that, you know, we talk about youth. I know one of the other um, business resource groups that's global is merge where they've come together generally general I can't say the word different generations have come together to say it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter what you identify as it doesn't matter what color of skin you have we will all transition from being one age to another age but we all have ways to give back to each other and to learn and they may learn from somebody older or I may learn maybe to be more paused maybe to to look back a little to to not have as much you know, gusto about me and want to do everything to wait. And maybe somebody will learn to be enthusiastic and to have that flame and to keep going. So it's such a balance. And I really think that at the end of the day, you know, sustainability is around balance. How do we have all of these sustainability goals come together for balance? And that balance may not be the same for everyone at every time, but it doesn't have to equal doesn't mean that it has to be the same for everyone. It's about equality and how do we embrace that and come together. So I am with you in in, in all of it. I, I have a kindred spirit here. I know, you know, we even have a similar colored shirt uh, <laughs> with, to just to find that yeah, and Bear offers us that, and it, it really does give us pause to think I'm very grateful and very happy to be here and to have these opportunities for sure. I think this might be, this This is the first time when we speak like this face to face, but I can I can see that, that this is kind of like the beginning of a new beautiful journey together. So I will definitely keep reaching out to you and, and exchanging ideas. I think we, we still have so much to learn from each other and, and you know, together we can, we can make magic work. You know, I'm sure we'll find uh, a lot of joy. Uh, uh, projects to work on. Yes, I'm excited for that. That that brings me joy to know that uh, you know there's like-minded people and we can bring different perspectives and come together and do things. You know, like I said to change the world. We we can. We can actually do that. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, uh, Cecilia. This this talk has been so inspirational, and uh, I've learned so much uh, from you. And and I'll definitely take a lot of uh, learnings, your inspiration uh, with me to my work. And uh, I'm sure that we'll we'll keep exchanging. And hope to meet you face to face one day. Thank you, I know as well. It was remarkable to have this opportunity to learn from you. Your passion and your perspective also fuels me to, to keep going and doing what we're doing and to making that difference every day in, in our in our centers and outside of that. So I look forward as well. I'm I'm going to manifest it and say it. We shall meet each other soon, sooner rather than later in person as 3D people. So absolutely. Fantastic. Look forward to it. Thank you. You as well. Have a wonderful day. And you too.